In game 22 of 1951 World Championship match, the challenger David Branstein demonstrated his great resourcefulness and deep positional and tactical understanding of chess. The world champion Mikhail Batvinik played his favorite stonewall variation of the Dutch defense, and Branstein destroyed the stonewall in a very impressive way. First, he carried out a minority attack on the queen side and opened the A file, after which his rook invaded the seventh rank. Then his knight occupied the central E5 square. But this wasn't enough. The blows over the entire board were required to destroy the champion's stonewall, and while Batvinik defended his weaknesses on the queen side, Branstein unexpectedly delivered the final blow on the king side by sacrificing a pawn, after which his dead bishop came into play with decisive effect and let Branstein finish the game with a spectacular queen sacrifice. Branstein started with d4, and Batvinik again played his favorite Dutch defense f5, g3, knight f6, bishop g2, bishop e7, knight c3, castle kingside, e3. So instead of more common Knight f3, set up with knight f3, Branstein chooses the setup with early e3, which was actually employed by Batvinik himself. And Branstein simply copies him. So the idea of this setup is to vacate e2 square for the knight. So instead of developing the knight on f3, he's going to develop it on e2. So d5, after this, we have the stonewall variation, so as you see, black has established the stonewall, and knight e2. The idea of this setup for white is to keep the bishop's diagonal open, so the knight on f3 isn't blocking it, and also the pawn on f2 isn't blocked, and white is preparing break in the center by playing f3, taking under control e4 square, and e4. And also the knight from e2 might jump on uh, f4 and would be actively placed on this square. c6, Batvinik finishes the establishment of his stone wall and is threatening to simply capture the pawn on c4, as after c6 black can simply defend the pawn on uh, c4, so after d takes c white wouldn't be able to play queen a4, and uh, because queen a4 attacking the pawn would be followed by b5 attacking the queen and defending the pawn on c4. That's why Branstein defends it, b3. And knight e4. So Batvinik centralizes his knight and the knight is greatly placed on e4. Uh, castle kingside, knight d7, bishop b2, knight f6, and here Branstein makes a slight inaccuracy. He plays queen d3 in order to take under control e4 square and prepare f3 followed by e4. However, Instead of this, it would have been stronger, as was indicated by great theoretician Isaac Balislavsky, to play f3 immediately attacking the knight. And if knight takes c3, then the knight on e2 would uh, replace the knight on c3, and white would have control over e4 square, and white wouldn't need to uh, spend a tempo uh, and move a queen. So even without the queen, without moving the queen, white would be able to play e4. And if after f3, instead of capturing the, on c3, the knight retreats, now you see uh, black, both black knights control e4 square, only then um, white would play queen d3 in order to again take under control e4 square and prepare e4. But Branstein immediately played queen d3, and this actually, after this, Batvinik had a chance to punish uh, Branstein for this slight inaccuracy, which he didn't do. He could have played bishop d7, solving the main problem of the stonewall variation, the light squared bishop problem, which is surrounded by uh, pawns on the light squares and is very bad. But now, after bishop d7, the bishop would be rerouted and on g6 it would also be placed very well because the queen, it would attack the queen on d3. And after f3, knight takes c3, knight takes c3, bishop e8, e4, f takes e, f takes e, and bishop g6 would be very strong. The bishop is greatly placed on g6, the main problem of the stonewall variation is solved, and the bishop is also pinning the pawn, and there is very unpleasant x-ray. But instead of bishop d7, Batvinik made his standard move uh, in the stonewall variation g5. The idea is to 
moves upon further so this actually isn't the attacking move on the king side because uh, the black uh, isn't ready for the attack on the king side but it's a, a prophylactic move to play g4 in order to take under control f3 square so that f3 followed by e4 is problematic because as soon as white plays f3 in order to play e4 next move black would simply capture on f3 and uh, again black would have the full control with both pawns over the e4 uh, square and white wouldn't be able to control e4 square with a pawn on f3 and also by placing the pawn on g4 black would incur the great position of the knight on e4 so as soon as white plays f3 to push away the knight from e4 black would simply capture on f3 and the knight would remain on a great position on e4 so that's the idea behind g5 and here again Brandstein uh, could have played much stronger he played c takes d which is fine but Balislavski showed a much better way f3 immediately and after knight takes c3 knight takes c3 now everything is ready for e4 that's why g4 of course preventing e4 but after f takes g of course black captures with the knight not with a pawn because the pawn must remain on f5 so that both pawns control e4 square after knight takes g4 it seems that e4 is impossible because there is no pawn support but still Boleslavsky showed that e4 is possible sacrificing a piece for a strong attack f takes e knight takes e4 d takes e bishop takes e4 so for a piece white has very strong attack great initiative all white pieces are very active while black rook and black black bishop aren't developed aren't really doing anything and Boleslavski gives a lot of uh, complicated long variations in all of them white has great compensation for the piece i will just show you one the simplest one knight f6 for example defending h7 as it's under attack but still bishop takes h7 check knight takes h7 queen g6 check forcing the king to move on this terrible diagonal where the great bishop is placed and of course d5 check would come with decisive effect after bishop f6 for example white would eliminate the main defender of dark squares sacrificing the exchange rook takes f6 and after knight takes f6 the second rook with great effect would come into play and the catastrophe on f6 would be inevitable but of course all this was very difficult to find and Bernstein simply captured on d5 and Batvinik captured with e pawn which is much more natural of course in order to make the bishop more active and now the bishop after the disappearance of e6 pawn would get some prospects on the king side however grandmaster Sveshnikov in his annotations recommended instead of e takes d to capture with a c pawn in this case uh, one more pawn namely e6 pawn would remain in the center and this is important and what is even more important there would be no pawn on c6 and white's minority attack which white would carry out uh, in our game as you will see would uh, wouldn't uh, make any sense because white wouldn't be able to capture on c6 in order to create weaknesses in blacks on black's queen side so according to Sveshnikov, it would have been better to capture with c pawn but Batvinik captured with e pawn and now as you see there is a pawn on c6 and white would carry out the minority attack capturing on c6 after which white black would capture with b pawn and black would have the backward pawn on c6 weak pawn which on the open file and also the isolated pawn on a7 that's the main idea of the minority attack on the queen side so e takes d of course f3 finally it followed knight takes c3 and now if uh, white captures with a knight b4 would be problematic because b4 would be under uh, black's control the black would play g4 of course that was the main idea behind g5 taking under control e4 square and after f takes g knight takes g4 b4 is problematic if white plays a3 for example preparing b4 black might play a5 and still b4 would be under black's control that's why after knight takes c3 Bernstein, of course captured with a bishop and now b4 is ready b4 
before is under White's control. And of course, G4 followed, preventing E4 and taking under control E4 square and ensuring, securing the knight's great position on the central square. F takes G, knight takes G4, and now black is black knight is threatening to return on f6 and jump on the great square on e4 but Brandstein prevents it with a strong move bishop h3 now knight f6 doesn't work because the knight would block the rook way and the pawn on f5 would fall bishop would simply capture on f5 so that's why why, as white is also threatening by playing bishop h3 to capture the knight, after which black would be forced to capture with a pawn, losing control over e4 square as f5 pawn wouldn't control it anymore, and white would uh, play e4. That's why Batvinik moved his knight to h6, as uh, knight f6 didn't work. However, on h6, the knight isn't placed well. And uh, it uh, moves further from the cherished square e4, as Kasparov uh, writes in his annotations. That's why Kasparov, in his annotations, instead of knight h6, suggests to ignore the threat of bishop takes g4 and simply play bishop d6. And if bishop takes g4, after f takes g, white can play e4, yes. But, uh, of course, black doesn't capture on e4, that would be a mistake, because queen c4 check, and after king moves d5, and uh, then bishop turns into the monster, and uh, black king would be in danger. That's why bishop e6, black has a move bishop e6, and black holds the position. For example, after e5, bishop retreats, knight f4 attacking the bishop, but queen d7 defending it, and it's hard to say, as Kasparov writes, that white has any advantage, because uh, white has a bad bishop, it's uh, blocked by its own pawns. But Batvinik played knight h6, and now his knight is badly placed on h6. Knight f4, the knight is greatly placed on f4, on a great blockading square. Bishop d6 now, and but Brunstein starts his minority attack. b6, b, b4, threatening b5, and creating weakness on c6. That's why a6, preventing b5, but a4, renewing the threat. Queen e7, attacking b4, rook b1, so now everything is ready for b5. That's why Batvinik prevents it by playing b5 himself. However, this lets Brandstein get control over the A-file. He will now double his rooks on A-file and after this will capture on B5 and after A takes B he will control the A-file. Bishop G2. The bishop returns on a important diagonal and is much actively placed on G2 than on H3. However, now G4 isn't under the bishop's control and Batvinik immediately exploits it. Knight returns on g4, and again, black is threatening to play knight f6 and centralize the knight, knight e4. And with tempo, attacking e3 pawn, that's why bishop d2 defending it. Knight f6 and rook b2, opening the way for the second rook, and then placing both rooks on a file and occupy the a file, that's the idea behind rook b2. And here, um, Batvinik played bishop d7, and Brandstein calls this move a mistake. Instead of this, he recommends immediate knight e4, attacking the bishop, and now white, after this, would be forced to either agree to the exchange of the bishop. This bishop is bad, of course, it's surrounded by its own pawns on the dark squares, however, it is very important bishop, it, has, it plays very important defensive role as it defends both pawns on b4 and the backward pawn on e3, which is placed on the open file, and if this bishop disappears, then black would exert very strong pressure on e-file. That's why after knight e4, uh, white would either be forced to agree to the exchange of this important bishop, or retain it, bishop e1, the only way to keep the bishop. However, on e1, the bishop closes the rook's way, and the communication between the rooks 
would be broken, as Blankstein writes in this case, after immediate knight e4. But instead of knight e4, Botvinnik played bishop d7, and this let Branstein uh, easily uh, place both of his rooks on the a file. Rook a1. And only now Botvinnik played knight e4, but now, after bishop e1, the rook isn't on f1 anymore, and both rooks are ideally placed. Rook e8, exerting some pressure on the open half of open file, and Queen b3, improving the queen's position and creating very unpleasant x-ray, and actually creating immediate threat. White is threatening to capture on b5, and of course black wouldn't be able to capture with c-pawn as d5 would fall, and after a takes b, a takes b, white would capture on a8, and after the rook captures, then d5 would fall, the knight would capture on d5, and after c takes d, queen would capture on d5 with check, and the rook would fall. So queen b3 uh, created actually Im immediate threat. But Batvinik didn't capture on the knight, which created this threat, knight takes d5, by bishop takes f4, because, as Branstein writes in his annotations, most probably he was afraid that after g takes f, the bishop would become active and it would move to h4 when the appropriate time comes. That's why instead of bishop takes f4, in order to uh, prevent this knight takes d5, Batvinik moved away from this unpleasant x-ray, king h8. And Branstein doubles on the a-file, threatening to capture, and black wouldn't be able to capture because the rook would fall. That's why Botvinnik played queen f8 in order to defend the rook on a8 with both the rook and the queen. However, now his rook and queen are tight. Neither of them can leave the 8th rank because white would immediately capture and then the rook would fall. Now, so Branstein isn't in a hurry. He, he just postpones the capture on b5 and improves his knight. Now he centralizes his knight. Knight d3, a strong move. The knight is um, heading to a central, great central square on e5 with great effect, attacking the bishop and the weakness. So besides opening the a file, Branstein also created with his minority attack a weakness on c6, the backward pawn weak backward pawn on the open file. So, as his pieces are tied with the defense of the rook, Batvinik finally moved his rook away from the a file. Rook b8. And now, of course, Branstein captures on b5 and occupies the a file and invades the seventh rank. Rook a7 with tempo attacking the bishop. Rook e7 and Knight e5, after invading the 7th rank and occupying a file, Branstein activates his knight in the center, again with tempo, attacking the bishop and the weakness on c6. And, of course, bishop takes e5 would be too dangerous, as the black needs this dark squared bishop in order to defend all these terrible weaknesses on dark squares. And that would be, of course, too dangerous to capture the knight, because black wouldn't have dark squared bishop while white still has it and uh, white would uh, threaten simply to open the diagonal of the bishop eliminate the defender of c3 square and move his uh, bishop on c3 with great effect with check and combined with the rook on the seventh rank this bishop would be very strong and that might be catastrophic for black that's why Instead of capturing the knight, Batvinik moved, retreated his bishop to e8, because he needs this bishop in order to defend another weakness on c6. So, what to do now? Branstein activated his pieces on the queen side, occupied the a file, invaded the seventh rank, his knight occupied the great central square, but Batvinik, it seems that Batvinik defended all his weaknesses on the queen side. So what to do? How to increase the initiative? With his next move, Branstein delivers the final blow after which Batvinik's position 
would collapse in a few moves. You can pause the video and try to find it. So now comes the blow on another side of the board, on the king side, g4. Now he opens his bishop's diagonal. The bishop was very bad. It was limited by its own pawns, but now the bishop comes into play with great effect. Bishop h4 would follow with tempo, attacking the rook. Also, after f takes g, f file is open, and as you will see, the rook will come uh, on f1 with tempo, occupying f file too. And also, uh, the pawn on f5 reinforced the knight, and now uh, that it moved, Branstein immediately eliminates black's main piece, most active piece, the knight on e4, bishop takes e4, and black cannot capture, of course, with f-pawn anymore, and is forced to capture with d-pawn, but now the queen, queen's diagonal opens, and the queen becomes very strong now, and, of course, bishop h4 follows, with tempo attacking the rook, and under this great pressure, Batvinik collapses, and he makes a mistake. A terrible mistake. His position is already very difficult, but uh, he still could have continued the resistance by capturing the rook. This variation was um, indicated by Branstein, and after rook takes a7, queen f5, Branstein was going to play bishop g3, creating a threat. Rook f7, attacking the queen. And, of course, a black wouldn't be able to capture the rook because knight f7 would be a fork check and the bishop would fall. But still, that would be much better than what Batvinik did. He, as the rook is under attack and as the knight on e5 is intolerable, decided to sacrifice the exchange. Rook takes e5. But now his position will collapse. d takes e. Bishop takes e5, so for the exchange he has a pawn. But, as you see, the f-file is open, so rook f1 with great effect. Now both rooks are very strong. Queen g8, attacking the queen, actually, and offering the exchange of queens. But now the final tactical shot. You can pause the video and try to find Branstein's move that finished the game on the spot. So, the queen is under attack, but Branstein ignores it and plays bishop g3, attacking the bishop, the main defender of the dark squares. And it turns out that black cannot capture the queen because that would lead to checkmate in two moves, rook f8 check and bishop takes e5 check checkmate and if uh, bishop takes g3 then the diagonal is free now is open the bishop isn't controlling it anymore and queen c3 check would lead to checkmate in two moves that's why after bishop g3 batvinik retreated his bishop to g7 but now of course the rook the unguarded rook falls and Branstein simply exchanged the queens and in this position Batvinik finally resigned because after king takes black is simply losing the rook and Branstein took the lead in the match while there were just two games left until the end of the match. Hit the like button as it's really helpful for the channel growth and see you in the analysis of game 23.